Uh, my name is Rezvan Zamfira, and we'll continue to talk about the urban development of cities, but rather in a different fashion, talking more about participatory design. And for this, I'm going to talk about a project that we did this summer in Bucharest with some, my friends from Poyana Ryokan. So we've all seen the unfolding events from this, the Roshia Montana Gold Corporation project uh, in the last few months, weeks. And among the amaz amazing aspects that this project, uh, that this discussion has started, is the fact that people could unite in a single voice to talk about problems like the economy, ecology, politics, tourism, and ethics in Romania. So surely this creates a precedent for moving this discussion much closer to home, to problems like urban spaces and uh, quality spaces for play for elder people, and all in all the things that make cities so great for its inhabitants. So when we started the project, we thought about three main questions that we wanted to ask. First of all, we wanted to know how can we transition from this reactive type of society to a more so active one, how can then we make collaboration in this network society? And of course, how can we, as uh, built environment professionals, adapt these existing skills to facilitate these increasingly relevant ways of developing the city? And we should start first by talking about a bit by, about the context. So we can now no longer talk about cities that are run only by the municipalities, and that there are a lot of problems that the municipality alone cannot face. And uh, to solve this, a lot of community-based organizations around the world have started doing projects in the public spaces. Behind those projects, there are a lot of uh, amazing people, but they cannot do it alone. They still need the help of professionals from different fields. But on the other hand, if we talk about professionals that have been always seen as the leaders of development for society and, of course, the cities, we continue constantly, we started to uh, question our profession. And we realized that there is a professional gap between the real problems that society faces and what we can offer. And this is mainly because the problems that we were used to were very simple and easy to pinpoint in the past, but now they're more interconnected. And the simple problems created specific clusters of professionals. And now the answer to those problems is no longer in any specific one, but rather in the middle. So we shouldn't see a building as an object anymore, but rather through its network of interconnected interests and actors. And professionals are trying to reconnect with the people and engage in dialogue. And this is a poster for the public participation in the Timisoara Urban Plan for uh, 2012. But people don't really understand what urban planners are doing, and they usually uh, ask themselves why should they care about those projects. And this is uh, part because of the lack of explanation for the, for the professionals, but also because Romania was uh, governed top-down for 40 years, and after that, people have been so many times let down by their government or professionals. And this is compared to other countries where this process has been started 30 or 40 years ago. It's a bit lagging behind. So the question we asked is, how can we transform from this reactive to an active society? So change from this uh, dialogue that only uh, uh, has the main points of yes or no, and it's not useful for development, to rather more important questions and relevant for the development of the city, like why, how, and what can we do? So we decided to go on the street and talk with people about how they would like to develop their own cities, and we got a lot of responses. This is some very small statistics from the seven days that we've been on the streets at uh, Street Delivery and the annual Festival of Architecture. And then we should go to the second question. So how can we make these collaborative decisions in a network society? So we think that rather than imposing new rules 
and changing them every time, we should build tools and frameworks for people to adapt to their own ideas about the built environment. And what we proposed was spaces for consultations, participatory game that will spark up dialogue and mapping of their problems and ideas. And of course, there are so many platforms online now that you can talk about the problems and they start very interesting discussions. But nothing can uh, compare to the discussions, the quality discussions that you have in the open space. This is the pavilion we had at Street Delivery and this is the one, that, the larger one that we had near the National Bank at the annual Architecture Festival. And actually, design played a very important role in the process because people became very interested in what we were doing there because of the new object they've seen on the street. And this is some pictures from the, before the first opening of the pavilion. And actually, they used them, used it in their own way as well. And in this space, we used participatory games where people could connect and understand their visions and uh, concerns regarding the development of the city. And of course, we needed to pinpoint you know, on a physical map the problems and what were they. Then again, we moved this discussion online so we can catch up and talk with other people that couldn't make it in on the street. We didn't we never had this uh, specific methodology for the process, but he, we also used a lot of feedback from people and professionals. And of course, this was just a test, so we could see how people will react to this idea in Bucharest. But we're thinking of continuing this, and we have future plans, and some of them are related to the other amazing uh, social uh, projects that are starting to pop up all around Romania. But the problem with them is you usually only find in the news the happy points about their projects, only the best practice, and if you, f you would think you could start your own right away, but when you start doing it, you realize you should have read more about uh, what the, the do's and don'ts were in a project. This is an example of what, what we are doing there. Uh, how was the timeline for a project, which necessary funding you need, or who do you need to cooperate to actually start it. And actually, if you look at all those projects, you can actually understand the uh, network of collaborations in social society in Romania, and this would be a good start to analyze that we have a very consistent mass of projects right now. So behind all this thinking, there's a very um, diverse team, but co very complementary, from people from Romania, UK, and Germany. And uh, Corina is the initiator of the project, but she couldn't make it here. So we made a small video of her that I'm going to present you right now. Hi, everyone. Hope you're having a good morning. I'm really excited to be with you through this video. And I'm going to be giving you a bit of background into the project and explain how it all started. Um, the project was actually sparked by my previous work in Germany and the UK, both in architectural practice and academic research, and the conclusion that Western practices and um, new ways of thinking about cities, such as participative architecture or tactical urbanism or grassroots social um, projects, could be tested in Romania. Um, my work so far has been motivated by curiosity of dealing with the cracks um, in the orthodox ways of doing things and also asking why. Um, this was also backed by my belief that innovation can be about finding the gaps within the existing model as well as um, a way of subverting the system, so working within the system and not against it. Um, which for the project um, meant that we've chosen to run it through two already established events, the so Street Delivery and the Bequest Architecture Festival, um, which for us, um, it guaranteed traffic flow and ensured visibility. Um, this was also coupled with the desire of exploring different ways of practicing architecture, and I'd say that this is a common trait in all our team members. Um, within our team, we all have an area of expertise, which is uh, mainly fueled by what we're passionate about. So we have people interested in engaging with passers-by who have been running the games and the workshops 
We have people engaging with the professionals who've been running the, the open tables. We've had um, people interested in how the quality of the design can contribute to the success of the programme. We've had people interested in conveying the message of the programme and curating it so that the mapping exercises were concise and clear. People interested in the visual representation of our findings and translating them into infographics, diagrams or online platforms. People looking into securing funding um, and also keeping an eye on the budget. Um, as well as people coordinating these activities as stewards. Um, this resulted in a horizontally structured team where people took responsibility for different parts but also crossed over. Um, we approached the design of the pavilions as well as um, the supporting programme with the idea that the quality, the standard quality, um, should give credibility to the project as well as evoke curiosity in the people who pass by. Um, the project actually started in January in the UK and this gave us just about enough time um, to make it for the funding application deadline for Youth in Action in March. Um, as we progressed, our team got bigger and when we came to Romania at the beginning of June, we were joined by more people from Bucharest and this added a lot to the project. Um, the design of the pavilion was deliberately flexible so we could continue to adapt and refine the programme. Um, and so it happened that we changed things that didn't necessarily work at street delivery and adapted them for the annual. Um, we wanted to offer a platform for dialogue and exchange, much like the space from um, the novel Morometi, because one, we believe in the notion of the expert citizen, in the idea that the citizen is the expert of their own environment. Um, two, we believe that listening to the people is a form of validation, and that built environment should be an expression of that validation. And three, we believe that only by starting an open dialogue about urban issues, we can dream that the wider public will start engaging more with matters that ultimately concern all of us. Um, thank you so much, and back to you, Razan. Yeah, she, she kind of said everything. So, <laughs> to wrap it up, I think the... Uh, the answer to those three questions we were asking at the beginning is somewhere in the middle of this intersection of this academic research with, the, of course, the built environment part and, of course, mediation between this professional and civic society. And this is where we want to position our association and projects in the future. So I leave you with this... Uh, quote from Jean Jacobs, who thought about this new way of seeing cities in the 70s in New York. Cities have the capacity of providing something for everybody, only because and only when they are created by everybody. So, thank you.